What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Derek back with another video. Today we are working on the Panigale V4 Speciale. Not doing anything too crazy, just changing some oil in an oil filter. But I gotta get that done because it is getting cold. It's late November um, and I gotta get this done otherwise it'll just sit until the spring. So anyway, let's jump right into it. <laughs> Welcome back guys. So like I mentioned, we're not doing anything too spectacular today. We are just changing the oil in the filter on my Ducati Panigale V4 Speciale back there. There are two primary modes of thought when changing the oil on your bike, car, truck, whatever. One is just let it sit at night and all the oil drains into the bottom of the pan so that you can change it. Um, the other is to start the bike, warm it up so that the oil gets nice and warm. And in my opinion, that will depend on where you are and when you're changing your oil. So right now, here in the Northeast, it's late November. It's 60 degrees. It's 60 degrees in my garage right now. It is about uh, 35, maybe 40 degrees uh, Fahrenheit outside. So it's pretty cold. So... My uh, oil is kind of congealed. It's kind of, you know, more like molasses than it's like water. So I prefer to start my bike. If you're in, say, Arizona, Southern Florida, Southern California, and it's, I'd say, maybe above 70 degrees, 75 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer, warm being relative, <laughs> um, then you probably don't need to start your bike. Either way is fine, but I have to start my bike, which is to say that I need to take the Panigale outside to start it up and let it run for a while to get it warm. Uh, while I'm doing that, I'm going to take the S1000RR off our lift to get it out of the way so that we make room for the Panigale. So let me do that. I'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. So as you can see, we got the S1000RR off the lift. We got our Panigale V4 Speciale on it. It's raised up. We are ready to go. It's all nice and warm. As you can see, clutch area is kind of cloudy out there because it's a cold day so let's head on over to my desk before we start tearing into the bike i'm gonna show you what you're going to need to do this job shallow graduated oil pan with levels oil graduated funnel oil filter Three and four millimeter Allen keys. Three eight by 125 screws. Tool for said screws. Gloves. Paper towels. 14 mil. Eight mil socket. Okay guys, we are going to start our oil and filter change process by grabbing our three and four millimeter Allen wrenches and we're going to remove this lower panel. We do not need to take off the upper panels or anything. We just need to remove the lower panel. So we start removing these three millimeter screws. There's a four mil back here and then a few on the bottom as well. So let's do that real quick. Okay, so now that our right side lower fairing is loose, we should just be able to wiggle it off here. Try not to break these tabs. Okay, let's bring you in here a little closer. Okay guys, so now that the right side lower fairing is removed, you can see we have our oil pan here. We have our drain here and we have our oil filter housing here 
with the cover. The housing cover is held on with three eight millimeter head bolts. The bolts themselves are not eight millimeter, but the, uh, the heads uh, of each bolt are in fact eight millimeter. So we're going to get our shallow oil pan. We're gonna put it under here. We are going to remove our 14 mil um, nut here for the drain. Up here, we're going to remove our oil fill cap so to allow air in as we uh, let oil out so that it drains properly. Our Panigale, all V4 Panigales, have an internal style oil filter like a cartridge as opposed to an external like on the S1000RR and some other models. Let's grab our shallow oil pan, our 14 mil wrench, and let's remove our drain plug. As always, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So we'll loosen it up there, get it a little loose. Now, but because we started our bike, this oil may be a little warm. So this is where paper towels, paper towels and gloves come into play. There we go. And now I'm also going to remove the oil fill cap up top here to allow air in while that's draining out. Now here is our oil drain plug. You can see we have some fine particles on this. This is magnetic. So we have some fine particles on here. That is to be expected. We, what we don't want to see are large chunks. So those fine particles are fine. We'll clean this up with some paper towels and get it ready. We'll take off um, our crush washer and we'll put on the new one. So let's let this drain for a while and then we'll come back and remove the oil filter. Okay guys, so as you can see, we're down to some, just a few drips here. So let's go ahead and remove our oil filter housing. So we wanna grab our ratchet and our eight mil socket. And there are three screws, one, two, three. So there we have all three of our screws. So again, the heads are eight mil. I think the screws are actually six mil and they actually go through the oil filter housing cover. They don't thread into it. So the oil filter housing cover has threaded holes for eight millimeter wide screws. And I'll show you here. So here are the two, here's the stock one. This, I believe this is six mil and this is eight mil. And you can see that they're not the same width at all. So how you get this housing off, what a lot of people do that don't know how to change their oil, is they'll stick a screwdriver between this housing cover and the housing and they'll start to pry off and that, that will actually damage the housing cover. This is only magnesium. Um, so you could damage that, we don't want to do that. So what we do is we thread the three screws that I showed you over at my desk, we thread these into the holes and basically these, you work like a pry bar. They push, they thread into the housing and then they, excuse me, they thread into the cover and then they push against the housing, sliding the housing cover off. So again, these are eight by one, two, five. I had these laying around. Um, chances are, if you have a um, spare parts bin like I do, you probably already have these in your garage somewhere. Otherwise, just run out to the hardware store, your local Lowe's, Home Depot, hardware, whatever, and pick up some. Okay, so for me, uh, these bolt heads are five mil. So I grab my five mil socket and a ratchet, and I'm going to tighten these evenly um, as I go. We're gonna do this slowly. And you can see we're starting to get separation from the cover and the housing. We're gonna move our pan over under here because at some point it's probably gonna fall off and we're gonna dunk our, uh, 
our housing. But we'll okay, here we go. And we're going to get a gush of oil here. So be prepared. There we go. And that's going to drain down in there. Now, while that's draining, let me mention this. Here's our oil cooler and our line here. And I often have people ask me, do you drain the oil from the oil cooler? And the answer is no. I don't know anyone. I don't know any uh, certified techs that drain the oil from the oil cooler. There is no drain plug in the oil cooler. And these high pressure lines are not meant to be removed. There's a large nut here and then a fastener with an O-ring and a screw here that holds it to the oil pan. This is not meant to be serviced. We don't need to change this. The amount of oil that it's left in the oil cooler during an oil change is negligible. If you really want to change it, then by all means, go ahead. However, you're creating 10 times more work for yourself and it's largely unnecessary. So anyway, here is our oil filter housing cover and we have two O-rings on here. So we're gonna remove these screen, uh, the screws and then we'll get a pick and we'll remove those two O-rings. Okay, so I got my pick. Here are the two O-rings on here. We're going to just get under there and remove both of those. Pull that off one, pull that off two. Awesome, just like that, O-rings off. So now we have to get our old oil filter out. Now, sometimes if you just let it sit here and, and drain for a little while, um, the oil filter will sometimes just pop out by itself. Other times it will not. If it won't, what you do is you grab your pick, reach up in there and just sort of pry it down here, like so, it drops down and out. Now here's our old oil filter. You can see that the top has an O-ring rubber o-ring with a hole as I drop it in the goop of oil <clears throat> and the bottom does not the bottom is solid so um, you can't put this in incorrectly so let's set that right there so here's our Ducati joint genuine parts oil filter I've used Ducati genuine parts oil filters I've used high flow and others I've used um, k and it's completely up to you. Um, I happen to have a, D a Ducati dealer that's only like 10, 15 minutes from my house. So that's why I'm using them. In here, there's an oil filter. And typically, sometimes um, depending on your dealer, they sell them separately. So there's an O-ring kit. Here is the part number. It has two O-rings and a crush washer in it that we're going to need. Here, put a little oil on the surface of the O-ring there set that aside and then we're just going to sort of fish this up here and you'll feel when it sits you sort of wiggle it around there you go it'll pop on make a little snap sound and then we're good we grab our housing cover and our o-ring bag and let's reinstall our o-rings okay so we'll pop out our O-rings. Here's our new, nice new shiny crush washer. And our drain plug. We'll put that back on there like so. And now we grab our O-rings and we start to fit them. So there are two grooves, just uh, obviously they're smaller because they're new. So we just roll them over. Fit them in the grooves like so. We'll do the same thing with the second one. Like so. Dab our finger, put a little bit of oil on the O-rings because we do not want to put dry O-rings up in the housing. They'll pinch and they'll break. Okay, so let's get our oil pan out of the way. We'll reinstall our drain plug. No. Snug. 
I will post the torque specs on the screen for said drain plug. If you are a torque monster. Okay. Grab our, our oil filter housing and our bolts. As you can see, if you look at this, these uh, the points of the holes in the triangle are not symmetrical. They're not even. There's less space between here and here, so this can only go on one way. So the longer space is toward the front. These two shorter holes are to the back. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to put it on this way and then have to rotate. So again, these are offset. So these the two shorter ones are toward the back, back here, and the other one's toward the front. So we put it in like this. And again, I will post, a, post the torque specs on the screen in case you want to know. All right, oil filter is replaced, drain plug is replaced. We are now ready to put oil in the bike. So let's lower the bike on the table and let's start to add some oil. All right guys, so we are over here at my desk. Uh, we have our recommended oil. So Ducati recommends 15W50 full synthetic. And depending on which version of your owner's manual you're using, uh, because Ducati likes to update the, the data in those owner's manual, um, the electronic copy that's on the Ducati website right now, as of this date, as of this posting, says one amount. And my physical copy says another. Regardless, I'm going to show you how you can best start uh, and where to start from and go from there. Over on the left side of the bike, we have our sight glass right there. And it should be dead center of that sight glass. There are two notches on either side of said sight glass. So your oil is supposed to fall in between there. So that top marker is the high point and the lower marks are the low point. So your oil should fall right in between there. It doesn't often matter what the manual says because we need to add enough oil to get between those markers. So here is my oil pan. This is why I suggested a graduated oil pan. You can see, hopefully you can see right there. We, we remove just about three quarts of oil. So at the very least, we are going to add three quarts to start. Now I have found that trying to use these markers here on the side, sorry, that's really bright, on the side of your oil container is kind of sketchy. So I have this. So we clearly have one quart right at the top and then we have pints. We have one and a half pints, one pint and a half pint. Uh, and then we have ounces and milliliters over on the same uh, other side. And we can open and close the valve here to control when it drains. So one quart, I fill this up three times, then I've added three quarts. I've added the exact amount of oil that has come out of the bike back to the bike. Then I'll take the bike out, I'll start it, let it run, bring it back in, and then check the sight glass. That's how I do it. Um, you may say, hey, the, the owner's manual says to add one gallon, and you go and you add a gallon of oil. And if you do that, uh, you may overfill your bike. And overfilling your bike with oil is nearly as bad as underfilling it. So we want to make sure that we do it right. So regardless of what your manual says, regardless of where you found 
the measurements or amount or value of oil that you're supposed to add to your bike when you're changing the filter or when you're not changing the filter. We want to make sure that the oil falls right in between those two markers on our sight glass. We took three quarts out. I'm going to add exactly three quarts back. We're going to take it outside, start it, let it run, bring it back in, let it sit for a minute and check the sight glass and add as we need to. So let's do that now. Okay, so I got my graduated container. I'm going to fill it to the one quart mark. I have the valve closed on the bottom, so that's open, closed. So I have it closed. All right, I'll fill a quart here. Make sure it's closed, otherwise you'll make a mess. All right, about a quart. Pop that in the hole. Turn it to open. Got a little pinch here. So that is three quarts. We're gonna close it. Take this out. I'm gonna go sit this in my other oil pan. Reinstall my fill cap. All right, now we can take this down, bring it outside, fire it up, let it run for a minute or two, then bring it back in. Okay, so there's our sight level. You can see that the oil level is way above those two markers. But as soon as we start it, that's going to drop down and it's going to pretty much disappear. So that's why if you just fill and you look and go, oh my God, I've overfilled it. Well, we haven't started the bike yet to get things circulated through the bike and so forth. So don't worry about looking over full right now. Okay guys, we are finished filling oil. We're back on the lift. I had to go out and back a couple of times just to top it off to make sure that we are okay. We are, you probably can't see it, but we are literally at one liter, maybe a tad, maybe a tad bit below. And we are right at our top marker there. So we are within specs so the only thing i have to do now uh, is put the lower fairings back on and wrap it up um, but this is a good time to take a look at anything that's under the air do some cleanup clean the lower fairings seeing they're off so i'm going to take that opportunity to do that now but um, i think we can wrap up for this video guys hopefully you found this informative but i am derek this is euro superbike life but you guys know the drill like comment subscribe or smash it if you're into that kind of thing until next time guys happy holidays